During the 1960s, I was getting more and more interested in systems in art, in the structure underlying artworks and the, the British systems art movement, for example. And by 1968, I started to write computer programs to help me in that work. But the important step really was understanding that the computer could bring to bear the notion of interaction into an artwork. Um, and the first piece I made was with Stroud Cornock and we called it Data Pack. And we showed it at uh, the Computer Graphics 70 exhibition at Brunel University in the UK. Uh, this was pretty primitive by modern standards. The computing was extremely primitive. But it was quite a conceptual work and was, I think, truly an interactive artwork. But building it made me interested in something else, which was the relationship of interaction. What goes on during an interaction process, not just the action and the response, but what was actually going on. And I started to look at psychology. And TGR Bauer was doing some work on very, very young infants. I mean, like a week old or a few days old and so on. And looking at how they interacted with the world around them and began, one might say, to build up models that help them understand the world. They were doing kind of uh, like mini scientific experiments. I got the idea that um, you could think of science as like little infants grown up, the same kind of processes at play. So I became interested in this idea of interaction as a means of exploring and understanding things which were not clear, where there were no instructions, you weren't told what to do or what to think. And I concocted the idea of a set of works which became known as the communications games. And what these were, were works where a number of people, a minimum of three, maximum I was thinking of was about a dozen, would communicate through a network, and this is before the internet, but it was a constructed network that I built with solder, soldering irons and so on, pieces of wire. Um, the people couldn't see one another, and uh, typically couldn't hear one another, but certainly couldn't see one another. And they would have a very, very narrow bandwidth communication. So they would throw switches, and that would affect the lights that would come on in other stations where other people were. But it wasn't direct one-to-one, -one. it was I built some kind of noise in, it wasn't random, it was that one person affected two other people, so it wasn't all predictable. So it was kind of simulating the kind of world that an infant might have, not really controlled environments, but uh, partially controlled. Um, and I built these systems. Now, these weren't using computers, but they were using digital logic, so they were using the notion of computing, if you like, but I designed logical circuits and actually constructed them, uh, as well as constructing the booths in which people stood or sat in order to interact. And I first showed one of these pieces at the Invention of Problems exhibition, the second one, at Leicester Polytechnic, organised again by Stroud Cornock, actually. And then at the Midland Group Gallery in Nottingham in 1972 at an event called uh, Cognition and Control that Steve Willis organised. Um, and then I did other things. I did a version which was just based on sound, sound and so on. So these were a core idea of communicating across a network, not trying to simulate the full bandwidth of face-to-face -face communication, quite the opposite trying to deal specifically with narrow bandwidths of communication and looking at the complexities of behaviours that came out in that context using very, very primitive technologies. Um, and these works started something for me that I've continued on till today. I'm still working in this direction. But as well as the technology getting more complex and sophisticated, so have the ideas. 
The first time that I actually used a computer in one of these works was at an event that uh, Steve Willis organised again. I think it must have been in the late 1990s. I forget exactly. Um, at what used to be called the Museum of Modern Art at Oxford. And here I s did the same kind of thing, but using computers to control uh, the, the communications. And more recently I've used the internet to do it. Uh, across the globe. So recently I showed a piece between uh, Belfast and Sydney in real-time communication using the same kind of ideas. So the context of this, the communication games, is looking at the communication process itself over restricted bandwidths, now using the internet, but originally just using uh, logic circuits and pieces of wire. So this is a concern with human human communication across networks. Uh, those networks may be using the internet, they may be using just logic circuits, but they should be distinguished between human, human communication across networks that simulates face-to-face -face communication. That really isn't interesting to me. What's interesting is what happens when the bandwidth is reduced and when we have to struggle to try to understand what's going on. That's what the infant has to do in the first week of life.